Hey guys, it's David from Automotive Press. I have the all-new 2025 Acura ADX, entry level in the premium crossover market. This one is actually built in Honda's Mexican plant and it is actually really well built. I'm gonna show you that in a second. So let me do a full engineer's review from front to back, outside, inside, driving review, all that stuff coming your way. Let me talk about the 2025 Acura ADX. Let's go. Welcome back. So I have the all new 2025 Acura ADX, very affordable, still premium crossover. Let me do my full engineer's review. I'm gonna do the audit first of the exterior and then we go into interior and go for a drive. This one is built in Mexican plant alongside the HRV because they both share the same platform. It does have a different engine though. It does have a 1.5 liter turbocharged 190 horsepower engine versus the naturally aspirated engine in the HRV. But let me just go through the audit first and tell you whether I like the exterior quality or not. And the result might actually surprise you because it is really well built in terms of exterior quality. It's only three millimeter there. Also three millimeter here, which is like world class. A bit wider at 3.4 millimeter, 3.5 and back to 3.1 millimeters. So the gaps are actually better than let's say an Acura RDX that's built in the US in terms of the, the panel fit and alignment anyway and then it's really well built along here the corners and everything lines up it's really difficult to get this part right because it's curved like this same thing here it all lines up here as well and even the gas cap which is always a difficult one to line up looks really well aligned to the body and the paint job is decent as well i really like the, the color of this paint i always like this kind of gray paint that has a bit of a sheen to it but what about the actual paint quality? Let me quickly do a check. I will also tell you if the panel is aluminum or steel, something that you should know. Uh, yeah, so let's do the hood first. 130 microns, and this is actually a steel uh, hood, which is actually a good thing because lately, many cars with aluminum hood flutter a lot at high speed because they're thinner and lighter. And so sometimes it's better to have a steel panel Front fender is 120, also steel panel, and the front door is steel, 105, it's a bit thinner than I like, 112 microns here, and finally 103, so a bit thinner than I like in terms of paint thickness, but the quality looks excellent. A lot of orange peel throughout, but that's pretty well typical of all Japanese brands that tend to use the type of chemical in the paint that produces kind of orange peel. And let's check the roof as well. And it's 106, a little bit thinner than I like, but again, usually in the roof, the paint is thinner because nothing rusts on the roof since the water doesn't stay. But I'm kind of surprised to find out every panel is actually steel. There's no aluminum panel on this vehicle. And the advantage is that they tend to resist door dings better compared to aluminum. And they're also easier to repair and cheaper to repair if it's a steel versus aluminum panel. So paint quality looks really good. Exterior quality is surprisingly exceptional actually. And you might have a bias toward cars built in Mexico, but I'm finding over the years that typically cars built in Mexico have at least as good or better than cars built in the US or Canada. Uh, maybe not quite the same level as those cars built in Japan, but generally speaking, they've been really good. Let's take a look inside and see how things are. All right, so I'm gonna take a look at the interior of the ADX now. I wanna point out that the interesting thing about Acura in general, in terms of design, is that they like busy designs. So not necessarily beautiful, but kind of busy from my perspective because we have different textures here from here another different texture we have a gradient where it is kind of cross hatched and becomes smooth uh, more different textures and then wavy thing here so you know it looks cool but sometimes i think it's a little bit too much however the good thing about honda slash acura models is that they really do an amazing job at ergonomics and also material selection so if you look at all the materials is soft touch. This is obviously Acura, so you expect that. But the quality of materials is really superb. The stitching along here also, everything looks really well made. This is kind of brushed aluminum look with a little bit darkened end, so I really like that. I know you can't see really well, but this part here is glossy black here, but textured along the side. I'm not sure why they have not chosen to just carry the texture all the way through and also all the way through here as well. That would have made more sense. But just in general, all Honda slash Acura products really well made. Ergonomics is excellent. This feel like an expensive stereo. And I just noticed, by the way, the color changes around the uh, rim here as I change the temperature. So that's really cool. 
buttons have a really good feel to it. The only complaint that I have is that um, this is flying at 10.2 inches, but this is 9 inch, which is again a standard thing for many Acura Honda products. And um, that's fine, it's easy to use, but it's a bit small for a premium product that's cost uh, over $50,000 in this particular spec for an Acura model. Otherwise, interior is beautifully made, quality looks really good, and also the workmanship in general is just solid, nothing is loose, panel fit good, the gaps are excellent just really well made. I think it's very comfortable in the front. The back space is actually quite reasonable and usable as well. It's not super big, but it's totally usable. The trunk and cargo space area looks good as well. So overall interior quality is, looks good. Engineering is excellent because you expect that from Honda. The most important thing though is to take it for a drive and let's see how this thing performs on the road. All right, so I'm driving the Acura ADX now on the road and this is the most important part for me. So I'm going to spend some time to explain what's going on. So first keep in mind that this one has a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine that's borrowed from Integra. So it has a beautiful engine turbocharged, not too bad in terms of output, 190 horsepower. It's very smooth, well engineered. I really like this engine and definitely um, huge improvement over the HRV's engine. But it is made it to a CVT and there's nothing really wrong with CVTs from an engineer perspective. But the feel isn't there. Obviously, I prefer a normal transmission that shifts up and down. It just feels better and it's also just better in terms of performance. But at least Honda knows how to design a proper powertrain. So the CVT's feel is actually not so bad. And overall engine is just fine. It's not a strong part of this vehicle. It does feel a little bit weak compared to maybe some other competitors from Germany, especially cars like a BMW X1 and also let's say um, Audi Q3 as well. They're more expensive though, so the value is still with the ADX. Uh, what I do like about Honda and Acura in general is that they do steering properly. It has a good weight to it, nice feedback from the road. It doesn't feel too light. It doesn't feel too heavy just the perfect balance and i think they do that better than any other brands I, I hope that toyota and lexus are lessening because the steering is just too light and there's no feedback whatsoever in most of their vehicles they're getting better at it but no question that honda engineers really know what to do when it comes to steering mechanism and steering feel the ride is also really good you don't really think that this is a small vehicle when you're driving it it feels bigger than it is because the ride quality, the overall noise vibration, the harshness are all really above average. And at this price, I'm not sure if you can get much better value than the ADX because this one comes really fully equipped. I would definitely say that I prefer to buy this over the HRV, even though I have to pay a lot more. But I gotta admit, the RDX comes pretty close in terms of pricing, and the RDX performs better, it's roomier. It looks better. I would say that if I have to put my money down, I'd rather buy the RDX and pay a little bit more. But for those people who are looking for small entry level crossover and they like the basic Acura design, this is still an amazing value, amazing vehicle. And just in terms of chassis dynamics, and what I mean by that is just the way that the steering, the platform, the suspension, braking, transmission all work together. There's no question that Acura and Honda just are leading edge. They really know how to design a really good platform. So I'm very happy with that. If you really enjoy driving in general and you like a balanced feel, you will always be happy with the Honda or Acura product. And this is no exception. It just drives beautifully. So now let me give you some concluding remarks about the ADX and whether I like it or not. So as I begin to conclude on this Acura ADX, what am I really thinking? Well, first of all, in terms of exterior quality, interior quality, and overall engineering is absolutely first class. It's built in Mexico, yes, but I think the overall quality is as good as what I'm seeing from Japan. Definitely better than what I see from North American factories because the gaps are tighter and the overall alignment looks better. So I'm very happy with that. Also the engineering in terms of outside, inside, really excellent as I would expect from Honda and Acura. Nothing less, they just know what they're doing when it comes to engineering. I wish Toyota and Lexus is lessening because material selection and overall engineering is really good and lately Toyota and Lexus models are looking cheaper and cheaper so I'm really glad that Acura is not going to that direction but in terms of driving the basic feel is totally fine it's still premium model but the uh, 1.5 liter engine is sort of at a maximum level when it when you step on the gas it kind of reaches its top end pretty quickly so it's definitely not a 
super fun car to drive, but the overall steering is actually quite solid as well. So in terms of value, I think it's all there. If you like smaller crossover, as many people do in Asia and Europe, this is an ideal vehicle from Acura. In many ways, maybe a better value than RDX. But here in North America, RDX is not that much more. You just pay a little bit more and you can get RDX. So a flagship model of the ADX, which is just for over $50,000 here in Canada, is about the same price as the lower end models of the RDX. I do think that the RDX may be a better value in terms of comparison, bigger, roomier, more fun to drive and so forth. But again, if you're looking for a small CD crossover, this is actually quite an amazing vehicle. I do think that there are lots of competitions out there because cars like a BMW X1 and Audi uh, Q3 and so forth are quite competitive and they're a little bit more fun to drive. And so it's a difficult market to break in, but certainly as an entry level premium crossover, this one has a proper place in Actra. I hope you enjoyed my video. If so, please give me a thumbs up and make some comments below. Love to hear what you think of the ADX. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well? I look forward to talking to you guys about another Acura product in the future. Thanks so much.